All right, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. This is PPD. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I will be doing a draft analysis of the Grand Finals for TI5, where we, EG, faced off against the Chinese wildcard team, C-Deck Gaming. Please note, this is not like my normal post-tournament vlogs, and I'm going to just be talking about the drafting strategy during the final series. Also, I'm not sure if you can hear my AC in the background. Uh, I can't get it to turn off for some reason, so just bear with me. A little backstory, C-Deck was actually one of the few teams we practiced with on our bootcamp days before the group stages, as well as the only team we practiced with between the group stage and the main event. Before the group stages, we actually weren't sure if they would even make it through the qualifier, um, but their play, their play was remarkable, and I think they'll probably be remembered as one of the best teams to ever play at TI. So let's get into it. Game one, C-Deck won the coin flip and chose first pick. This would be kind of like a highly contested position because of the power heroes we were able to play during this event, most namely Goblin Techies, Naga Siren, and Leshrac. In response to their first pick, I chose Dire. At the beginning of the tournament, we were choosing Radiant, but as we saw the Chinese teams dominate on the Dire side, we analyzed the replays and discovered that the advantages in both the off lane and safe lane due to mostly the creep equilibrium as well as Roshan make up for having like the slightly less advantageous mid lane. So when Cedic had first pick, their bans were relatively obvious. They here I'm gonna kind of fast forward while I talk through this. They banned out Naga Siren and Techies, and expected us to ban Leshrac because they had first pick, which is what we did uh, in the upper bracket when we played them. Instead, we decided to give them a chance to play the Leshrac and see how they would use the hero because this would be the first time they would use Leshrac in the entire tournament. And we weren't totally not comfortable, or totally, we weren't totally uncomfortable playing against Leshrac, so we had some experience with it during the group stage. We had like two losses against Leshrac, and then like two wins against Leshrac, I think. But obviously that's not the greatest record. Um, yeah, but like, like uh, this is a best of five, so I think the risk was kind of outweighed the reward, seeing what they could do with Leshrac, and taking their gyrocopter. My bans were Darkseer and Bounty Hunter. In hindsight, in these first two games, I think the Darkseer ban was a bit unnecessary, but either way, I didn't have to worry about Darkseer plus, plus X combo, especially uh, Darkseer Wyvern. That was like one of the strongest combos in this tournament, uh, which is like borderline broken, I believe. It's like AoE Black Hole. Um, so without Darkseer in the pool, you could actually run a lot more heroes in your safe lane, which is something we wanted to have the option to do for Fear. Little did we know we'd be getting Gyrocopter instead of Lushrak, who both do well versus Darkseer at all stages of the game due to high movement speed and plenty of AoE to deal with the illusions from the Wall of Replica. So after the first pick Lushrak, we followed with uh, Gyro Clockwork immediately. Both of these heroes are pretty good in the matchup versus Leshrac. A quick BKB on Gyro is an acceptable item build because he is still able to farm relatively quickly with his spells. Most heroes you don't want to get an early BKB um, just because it kind of slows down your farm by a lot. And Clockwork with an early blade mail can devastate a farm to Leshrac's game no matter how farm Leshrac is unless he has a BKB as well. And with the Dire offlane we knew that Universe would at least be getting some solid experience early game if not maybe some decent farm depending on how his game went. Um, so Cedic went straight for aggressive, uh, uh, second best hero. I think his best hero is Gyrocopter and his second best hero is PL. So they went right for that right away. Uh, PL has matched us up relatively well versus both Clockwork and Gyro, but picking him second can be a little, a uh, little, a little scary sometimes. We have we still have three picks left to pick plenty of AOE to deal with the illusions, and if PL doesn't have his illusions up during the mid to late game, he's not really that scary of a hero. Okay, so for the next two bands, um, they're going to use their first ban on Lena, I believe. Yes, they, the first ban is Lena. This is just um, a scary mid laner that matches up pretty well versus Leshrac. Our second, our third ban is the Tusk. This is just a hero that um, C deck loves to play. Garter, namely, kind of wrecked us in um, a couple of matches and you can snowball and save the last track which is pretty big if he gets in a precarious situation 
their next band was the Ember Spirit, and Ember Spirit was a pretty popular pick this tournament, mostly because Phantom Lancer is a pretty popular pick, and Phantom Lancer just gets destroyed by um, Ember Spirit. Like Phantom Lancer is borderline like unplayable against Ember Spirit, like mid to late game. So if you're gonna pick PL, you better make sure that you ban Ember Spirit. Uh, with our final ban of the second phase, we get rid of the Dazzle. And this was, we weren't totally sure on this, but Dazzle in general is pretty good against Gyrocopter for the armor from the Weave. And he works really well with PL as well, because PL needs just a kind of little bit of healing in lane. And also, you can do a lot of damage with the healing wave. Um, if the PL is attacking a target, you'll get max damage from the wave, which is a lot of damage, depending on their armor. And so into the second phase of picks, we ban Dazzle and pick Crystal Maiden. I yeah, I believe I played Crystal Maiden in this game. We weren't totally sure on this pick, but we didn't want to reveal our other core. We thought about taking Storm Spirit third, but we figured we could probably get away with not taking Storm Spirit for third because we didn't think they would take Storm Spirit because they already had Leshrac, who we thought was their mid laner, and then Phantom Lancer as well for their safe lane core. So we wanted to wait on the storm, so maybe they would have a little less lockdown. And also, CM is kind of a soft counter to Phantom Lancer because of her ultimate, as well as her Crystal Nova. It's a lot of AoE damage that just kind of burns through the, the illusions. So in big team fights late game, if you just all on Crystal Maiden, as long as the actual PL isn't hitting you, the PL is going to have a hard time getting um, work done, uh, unless he kills you first. Cedic then picks Winter Wyvern. And we respond instantly with the Storm Spirit pick. They didn't play too much Winter Wyvern. This, I mean, it, it wasn't like a top priority for them, like it was for other teams. So it was a bit of a surprising pick. But having some BKB lockdown against Gyrocopter is always a pretty good idea. And once you get Glimmer Cape, you can kind of save people that get uh, cogged in by Clockwork. And the reason we picked Storm Spirit is because it's one of Sumel's best heroes, and he really likes it versus. Uh, Leshrac, he thinks it's like one of the acceptable matchups because Leshrac is such a strong mid laner. He thinks he can do it uh, relatively well on the Storm Spirit. And if his lane does go badly, he can just move to jungle and catch up there. And it's also very strong against PL throughout the entire game, especially when you get late game and you have like three or four items. You get the Shivas and the Bloodstone and a lot of mana, and you can just kind of burn through all the illusions with your magic damage. Their fourth pick is Spirit Breaker, I believe. Yes. They fourth pick a Spirit Breaker, which is more BKB lockdown for Storm, potentially, but also for Gyro, which I think is more namely why they picked it. And I think it was probably their weakest pick of this draft. Um, forcing fights into Gyrocopter is really, really tough to do. And if you take one wrong step uh, against the Clockwork, a Spirit Breaker, you just kind of get picked off and you can't really do anything. And so the final phase, we ban out on Dying. This is because we were kind of worried about our offlane. We were already setting up for a dual lane setup with Crystal Maiden in the Dire Jungle. And we didn't want our Gyrocopter plus one lane to lose. So we, bought, we ban out the other strong Spirit Breaker plus one offlane combo, which is on Dying pretty hard lane to deal with for any any dual lane really even gyrocopter is pretty strong in lane their final ban was visage yes visage and yeah uh, it's not particularly great versus any of their heroes um, but it was still a really popular pick this tournament just because I think he's you know, he's a pretty strong hero after they changed the birds. Our fifth pick was Skywrath Mage. And this is another one of Aoi's favorite heroes. It's surprisingly important to pick heroes your team wants to play. Sometimes you'll see a better pick, but your player may or may not uh, like or feel comfortable playing it. This happens all the time when we are playing. If you want to be able to play a certain hero, make sure that you practice it before your match or the event that you're going to. Sometimes comfort picks will work out a lot better than um, the best picks. Cedex's final pick was Queen of Pain, which threw us off a bit. We fully expected the last track to be mid and had planned 
for that. Quap versus Storm is a bit better of a matchup for Quap and is strong versus both Gyro and Clockwork. They were forced into dual lanes because they had no true offlaner and setting a Spirit Breaker solo Radiant offlane is nearly impossible. Uh, this game in general went pretty smooth for us. They tried playing really aggressive and diving into our towers versus Spirit Breaker and we were able to just turn around all the ganks with a Storm or a Clock Port plus Gyro Copter's um, call down. So these next games, the analysis is going to be a little bit shorter than it was for the first game. But that's just because I kind of explained a lot of the reasons why we pick certain heroes against other certain heroes. And a lot of the picks for this tournament and especially this series were very similar. Uh, going into game two, I had selection priority. So I was able to choose side or pick. And I think it, I probably made the foolish decision of taking Dyer over first pick. But... It was pretty obvious to us that C deck was very uncomfortable and radiant, and we thought that we could exploit it again. We also thought that they may potentially take Gyrocopter with their first pick, and we'd secure ourselves less track anyways while having second pick. My first two bands were the same as the previous game. I banned out the Bounty Darkseer, they banned the Naga Techies, they picked less track. Um, well, one thing to mention is I actually, in the first series, you'll notice that I banned Darkseer and then Bounty Hunter. And in this series, I, I banned Bounty Hunter and then Darkseer. Um, this is kind of like a... I kind of try to do this to mess with my opponent's mind. It's like a cute little trick that can work sometimes. Um, if they don't know what your second ban is, maybe their first ban changes. I don't think it really works most of the time. Because people are pretty set going into the draft what they want to get rid of. But sometimes you can catch your opponents off guard with that. Rather than just doing the same bans twice in a row. Or the same ban order. So they took Leshrac, we took Gyroclock immediately, and this time, instead of PL, they grabbed Tusk, who we had banned during the second phase of the previous game, of the first game. So now that they have Tusk, we have to worry about our safe lane being challenged by an aggressive dual lane, so immediately we ban out Undying after they ban Sumail's Ember. With their fourth ban, they once again target Sumel, as we haven't picked this hero yet. And they ban the Storm Spirit, which kind of decimated them in the first game. We banned PL last. And this was kind of, we weren't really necessarily afraid of Tusk, but we wanted, we had a, kind of had a free ban, in our opinion. And we wanted to force Aggressive off his two best heroes and kind of make him play something new. And this is where we messed up. Picking Crystal Maiden 3rd again, just like I had the previous game, was definitely not a good idea. CM versus Tusk isn't really the best matchup for her. We wanted to stay committed to picking a jungler on Dire. That was kind of our strategy for this set. Um, but we definitely could have chosen something else instead of Crystal Maiden, or at least maybe waited on the Crystal Maiden until later. C deck 3rd picked Visage which is a pretty good hero against CM if you think about it. She can always just fly her birds around and kind of sit them on top of Crystal Maiden. You can just kill the Crystal Maiden with them. She's very squishy, or you can just drop the birds when she ults. Uh, Visage is also one of Q's best heroes. He's just He really excelled on this hero during this tournament. They played very well with it. With the fourth pick, we chose Winter Wyvern for Aoi. This is a hero that we both play as position four and position five. Um, we like it in both. We like it in both spots. It just depends on the game. Um, this game, we just we needed a solid four that could help Gyrocopter in lane, and uh, Winter Wyvern was the pick for us. And also having like some spam for when they push towers with this Visage Lash Track is always helpful. Um, so this, so last series they fifth picked the Quap, and this series they fourth picked the Quap, and this was for aggressive, I believe. Yeah. So when we saw the Quap pick, we knew that they were going to challenge our lanes. So they would safely in the Quap or the Lash, and then send two or three heroes top at our dual lane, and send the other one mid. And because they had Lashrak and Quap, who were both extremely strong laners, those both those one v one matchups would be very difficult for us to win. We weren't entirely sure 
what they were going to pick at this point. So we kind of just had like a, another free ban. And we decided to get rid of Dragonite because we thought they had these early game, not necessarily early game cores, but you know, heavy magic damage. And we thought if they weren't able to push our towers and be able to defend our towers, maybe we could just get late game and win that way. They banned Lina, just another strong uh, laner. So they're trying to abuse us in the laning phase. We went for one of the few Sumail heroes that was left, which is the Wind, Wind Ranger. Excuse me, not Wind Runner anymore. Uh, this was, I mean, it seemed like a good pick on paper, but once the, once they picked the Brood Mother, um, they just sent the Brood mid against our Wind Runner, and he just kind of free farmed, and they roamed the entire map with Tusk. Garter is a he's a machine on that hero, and they just kind of rolled us over. This was probably one of the clowniest Dota games of TI, at least for us. There was just stuff going on in every lane all the time, and I'm not sure if that was CDX plan, but it definitely worked out. So at this point uh, for game three, we finally realized that the Darkseer ban was not necessary. Instead, we decided to ban the Tusk, which Garter has now demolished us with in two games, once in the previous game, game two, as well as one game during the winter bracket final. They just fight really well with Tusk. They use the shards to block pathing, and they separate you in team fights, and then they just kind of swarm together. And it's just really, really hard to fight, and they play it very, very well. Uh, so we used one of our first two bans on it. They did the same bans once again and first picked the Leshrac. And yet again, we decided to follow up with the Gyro Clockwork. Um, yeah, so their second pick this game was Visage, a hero we may have potentially been during the second phase. Visage doesn't really have too many counters, excluding possibly Gyrocopter after the change to how his birds take damage. So luckily we had Gyro. Um, a little preface to this game, uh, when we lost the second game, we shrugged it off quickly because we kind of thought we got cheesed in order to, uh, we kind of thought we got cheesed. So in order to avoid that again, our first ban out of the second phase was Broodmother after they banned Sumail Storm. Uh, once again, they, they were targeting Sumail with bans again. I think that was kind of their strategy after the first two, after they got rid of Nagatekis, they just went for Sumail's heroes. Um, they banned out Lina. which could possibly land against Lashrak and do very well. And then we banned out the Witch Doctor. So when we saw the early Visage pick, we decided, hey, maybe we can get aggressive and we can punish this Visage pick who's, you know, Visage isn't the best hero in lane. He's okay, but uh, we have Gyrocopter and we get two strong heroes, we can definitely go challenge them. Witch Doctor is a pretty good hero for defensive tri-lanes. He kind of dissuades early aggression with his Paralyzing Cask, aka the Coconut. Uh, we third picked Ember Spirit this game, and this is kind of a weird pick, and it maybe caught some people off guard, and they were like, oh, they're going to put Ember mid versus Leshrac, and Jet, in most cases, that's not a good idea, but I think this was kind of a mismatch for mid. I think Sumail's ability to play mid is a lot higher than uh, Shiki's ability. I think that Sumail is just like an amazing player, especially on the heroes that he likes to play, like Ember and Storm Spirit, and he can, we can generally send him mid versus any matchup, and he's going to at least uh, split the lane or even win it by, like, a large margin. So in this game, like, Leshrac, like, kind of crushes Ember Spirit on paper, but because of how good Sumail is at Ember Spirit, he was able to um, actually beat the Leshrac in lane. And that's just kind of like, it's not like a, it's not even like a surprise factor for us. It's just something that we expect out of him. And, you know, we don't, I wouldn't say we expect it out of him, but we are comfortable risking something like that because we know how well he's going to do most likely unless he gets ganked then he decides to feed but then he catches up and he owns uh, with their third pick c deck decides to pick lion for some additional lockdown for the ember spirit we then responded with a pretty uncharacteristic undying pick which i would be playing this game which was my first dirge game of the tournament I actually, I actually really like playing this hero, but I just never get to play it very much. We don't draft it that much overall, and then usually when we do draft it, Aoi or Universe is playing it. Lion Visage is a very weak support duo, and we knew that we could aggressive trialing, even though aggro trialings in the past generally haven't worked out for us at all, and we try to stay away from them. But this was like, if there was a game to aggro trialing, this was the game. With their fourth pick, they picked Darkseer. Most teams like Darkseer versus Undying because 
it's pretty easy to dodge lanes and you just throw your darkseer in the safe lane or you throw your darkseer in the off lane and on, on dying can't really do anything to him um he's got the surge to get away in lane and then like mid to like when it like i guess when laning phase breaks down and you start team fighting if somebody's getting you know beat down by zombies you can just surge them and they can run away our last ban was on anti-mage we didn't really have any lockdown we had clockwork hook and ember spirit shackles or chains and that's definitely not enough lockdown so we had to ban anti-mage if you if the team is playing anti-mage and there's no catch you kind of just lost i think and uh anti-mage is one of the better carries against gyrocopter they banned dazzle um they didn't need another support we need another support dazzle's pretty good with both gyro ember spirit and undying and i guess he's probably pretty good with clockwork as well so it was a it was a pretty good ban by them it's just a, it would be a really good hero for us here Our last pick was yet again Skyrath Mage for AUI. Uh, it was a it was it was a comfort pick I think. In a perfect world I think we may have taken Rubik for myself or Aoi, but unfortunately neither of us played are ready to play that hero at this tournament. Uh, we just haven't practiced enough with the hero and like played enough pubs or have enough experience playing the hero. So maybe next year we'll we'll, we'll be ready to play the Rubik and we'll pick it in this situation if it's still good. Their last pick was Slark, which made us kind of feel like we had already won the game. That The Slark hero is just not that good, in any of our opinion. And that being said, they played very well, and this was a crazy intense game. If you missed it, you should definitely go back and check it out. Game 4, we had selection priority again, and we chose first pick this time instead of Dire. This either meant we were going to 100% get either Leshrac, Naga, or Techies, all of which we would have first phased in this series without hesitation. They banned uh, Lesh Techies, and we banned the same Bounty Hunter and Tusk that we banned in Game 3. With our first pick, instead of taking the Naga, which I think they expected us to take, we took the Gyrocopter. I think this threw them off a lot because they expected us to first pick Naga Siren because that's one of our best heroes and they thought they were going to get um, Gyrocopter for aggressive but because we knew that they didn't play Naga we had no reason to prioritize it when Gyrocopter is just like such a deny pick from, from them. So anticipating the second pick Naga they picked up Clockwork and Lina. Uh, Lena's a pretty good hero against Gyrocopter because Gyro likes to go early BKB and you can still blow him up with an early Ags on Lena. So there we go. We get our second pick, Naga, and we proceed to the second ban phase. In this phase, we banned both Ember Spirit and Visage. Visage is a hero they used against us in the upper bracket final when we had Naga. It worked out really well. Ember Spirit also is relatively good against Naga. Not only can you burst down her illusions very quickly, you can also escape from a majority of the sleep combos um, with your remnant or even you can even dodge things with sleight of fist so it's a pretty hard hero to gank with the uh, naga sleep they banned out dark seer and did they ban shadow fiend yeah so dark seer is a relatively good hero with naga it's a pretty good lane naga dark seer throw it in the offline it's pretty hard to deal with um, Shadow Fiend is a hero that we used in the upper bracket final when we had Naga as well, but I don't think we really considered Shadow Fiend too much this game, but it was something that they knew we played, so they decided to ban it. They then third picked the Wyvern, just like in game one, and we immediately followed up with Sumail Storm Spirit, just like in game one. Um, and just like in game one, they went for PL against both Gyro and Storm, which was a bit peculiar. I think this was probably kind of what I talked about before, of them maybe being a comfort hero for them. And I, I don't I don't like um You know, I can respect that because you're playing an elimination match at the you know, the biggest game of your life, and if you're gonna lose, you wanna lose playing your best stuff rather than try something new that maybe you're not super comfortable with. So they decided to get aggressive his PL. With our fourth pick, we were able to pick Earthshaker, who also kind of destroys PL 
in the mid to late game. So with their last ban, they knew they were looking to ban a PPD hero. And in the first game we used Crystal Maiden against PL and it worked out pretty well. And so they decided to ban it this game. Pretty smart ban, we may have taken it. I like the CM plus Naga support duo, it's very strong. We banned out Dazzle, uh, namely it's, it's good versus Storm and Gyrocopter and you can also apply Weave during sleep, so it's pretty good for that as well. Also it's just super good with PL. Like for the for the reasons I mentioned before. So their fifth pick was the Dragonite, and this kind of committed them to some early pressure on our structures, so we had to get ready to defend against them. We were between either Lion or AA or Ancient Apparition here. I've played a lot of Lion, especially during the DAC meta, and I was pretty comfortable with the hero. A was a bit of a different story. It's not really here we practice in scrims at all, and I certainly don't pick that miss <laughs> I certainly don't pick that hero in matchmaking, but it looked pretty good for the game. And I think it was Sumail who said just go for it. And he says A actually looks really good here. So we decided to do it. Sometimes, you know, just YOLO picking is how you can win a tournament, and it worked out great. Alright, so that's it guys. Hope this live up to all the hype. Thanks for watching. I will be working a bit more on my YouTube channel this year, so subscribe to stay up to date on my content. I will start streaming somewhere around the 25th of August when I get back from a much needed vacation. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you're from Brazil and you hate me, please do not post. If you'd like to drop a salt meme, feel free to do so and have yourself an Ellie giggle.